Icky is a loser and the worst student at his academy because he lacks any magical talent. Considered an outcast, Icky's family disowned him. One day, Icky hears news about Princess Stella, the academy's strongest and most beautiful pink-haired magical knight. Learning about her seemingly perfect life, Icky grows envious and heads out for a run to clear his head. While training with his sword, he dreams of becoming a magical knight, a powerful warrior capable of materializing their soul as armor and wielding superhuman abilities. Returning to his dorm, Icky unexpectedly finds a random girl who turns out to be Princess Stella herself. Embarrassed by the situation, Stella blames Icky and complains to the school director who explains the school's principles and warns Icky about the consequences of his actions. Stella insists on a serious duel to settle the matter. Icky tries to apologize, but when his reasoning fails, he compliments Stella's beauty, which unexpectedly flusters her. The director interrupts and reveals that Icky and Stella are roommates, having paired the academy's weakest student with its strongest. The awkward revelation leads to an argument, and the director proposes a mock battle to resolve the dispute. Stella declares that the loser must become the winner's servant, and Icky the simp is a bit too excited to be her slave. At the battlefield, the director reminds them that no physical harm will occur, though one's strength can be drained to win. A fierce duel begins, with Icky showcasing remarkable sword skills, countering Stella's fire-based attacks. He praises her talent and reveals his special technique, blade steel, which allows him to predict his opponent's moves. As Icky prepares for a decisive blow, Stella gathers her magic for a powerful counter. However, Icky surprises everyone by using a technique he invented himself to dodge her attacks at supersonic speed. Ultimately, he defeats her with a strong final strike. After the battle, Stella ends up in the hospital, wondering how Icky could defeat her despite his low rank. The director explains that ranking doesn't fully account for actual fighting ability and reveals no system exists to evaluate Icky's true skill. Stella admits her reason for studying abroad is to be recognized for her abilities and hard work and not just her natural gifts. Later, Stella enters Icky's room to apologize but finds him asleep. As she admires him, he wakes up, and she embarrassingly apologizes again, offering to become his servant as per their agreement. However, Icky simply laughs it off and suggests they remain roommates, to which Stella happily agrees. The next day, after finishing their morning run together, Icky casually mentions that running 20 kilometers daily is just part of his routine. Bro I swear I can run 20 kilometers in 10 minutes as well. Stella, impressed, proudly says she was able to keep up with him today, hinting that she can match his pace. Icky then reveals that his sister is starting school today, raising Stella's suspicions. He reassures her that no step-sibling Onichan bullshit is happening between them as they are blood-related. In the classroom, their new teacher Yuri warmly welcomes the newcomers and explains the rules for the upcoming competition, where the selection will be based on actual fighting, with the top six students chosen as school representatives. But just as Yuri is about to elaborate on fighting techniques, she accidentally spills tomato juice all over the floor. Later, Icky and Stella visit her in the hospital, where Yuri explains that this happens almost daily, as she vomits about a liter of red liquid each day. Icky advises her to take it easy, revealing to Stella that it was Yuri's recommendation that got him accepted into the academy. Later, a girl named Kagami excitedly approaches Icky, praising his performance in the mock battle and asking for an interview. Blushing, Icky politely declines and hurries to catch up with Stella, but he's interrupted again, this time by a girl named Shizuku, who calls him her brother. Icky confirms their sibling relationship, but Shizuka shocks everyone by kissing him on the lips, leaving the onlookers gasping as cause they just witnessed domestic girlfriend in real life. Shizuku, upset and emotional expresses how much she missed Icky during their four-year separation. Stella steps in, pulling Shizuku away and scolding Icky for engaging in what she considers inappropriate behavior with his sister. An argument breaks out between Shizuku and Stella, with tensions escalating until Stella accidentally reveals that she and Icky have a master-servant relationship, surprising everyone. As the tension rises, Shizuka summons her water sword, and Stella does the same as both of them preparing to fight. They hurl insults at each other before launching an attack, but the director intervenes, taking them to the restroom and sternly warning them that using weapons outside designated areas is strictly forbidden. As punishment, she orders them to clean all the ladies' restrooms for a week. After the director leaves, instead of a physical battle, the two continue trading verbal insults about how ugly the other is. After serving their punishment, Shizuka warns Stella not to act shamelessly and reveals how Icky felt ignored and treated as if he didn't exist. Shocked by this revelation, Stella later confronts Icky, 
who opens up about his difficult childhood. He shares how his family mistreated him for not having the same powers as his grandfather, Ryoma, a famous samurai. Excluded from family events, lost and ready to give up, his grandfather Ryoma appeared and encouraged him to persevere. Inspired by his words, Iki decided to become a strong knight like his grandfather. Iki explains that he had to learn everything on his own, with nobody to teach him, and people struggled to accept his desire to become a knight. The old director even set rules to ensure his failure. However, the new director is more supportive, and she has assigned Iki to work with Stella. The next day, Iki and Stella continue their sword practice in preparation for the Seven Star Festival, where they aim to become school representatives. Stella mentions her opponent, Mamatani, a third-year student, and while Iki begins to explain Mamatani's fighting style, Stella prefers to be surprised during the battle for a better learning experience, so they agree not to fully study their opponents beforehand. Later, Stella nervously asks Iki on a date, but their plans change when Iki gets a text from his sister Shizuku. Stella joins them the next day, and her jealousy grows as she watches Iki and Shizuka holding hands. Tensions rise, and the two girls argue. Shizuka then introduces her roommate Nagi, and the group continues their outing with Stella, accusing Shizuku of acting inappropriately. At a restaurant, Shizuka spills ice cream on Stella, and Iki wiping it off only intensifies the jealousy. Shizuka criticizes Stella while Nagi offers encouragement. In the restroom, Iki confides in Nagi about his sister Shizuku's reserved nature. They overhear something suspicious and hide in Nagi's shadow dimension, discovering a group of potential kidnappers in the mall. With permission from the school director, they decide to investigate. Meanwhile, the kidnappers take hostages, including Stella and Shizuku. Stella bravely steps in when a child is threatened and uses her fire magic. However, the leader of the kidnappers, Bishop, absorbs her attack and demands that she remove her clothes to protect the hostages. Unaware of Stella's situation, Iki struggles to break free, but Shizuku creates a magical barrier to protect everyone. With the help of Nagi and Stella, Iki defeats the kidnappers. Afterward, Iki apologizes to Stella for the danger she faced, and Shizuku admires her bravery. Just then, Shizuya, another student, arrives and finishes the job with a laser attack. Shizuya later brags about his role in the rescue, insults Iki and reveals that he is Iki's first opponent in the upcoming tournament, bringing up Iki's past defeat at his hands. Stella defends Iki, but the stage is set for a rematch in the tournament. The next day, the competition kicks off with Stella facing her first opponent, Mamatani, also known as the Heavy Tank, due to his formidable defensive capabilities. The crowd cheers for Mamatani, impressed by his combat skills and experience in the competition, believing he will be a tough challenge. However, Stella approaches him with unwavering confidence and manages to intimidate him into surrendering. Consequently, she is declared the winner. Later, Iki and Stella watch a video showcasing Shizuya's fighting skills, leaving Iki astonished by Shizuya's abilities. Iki inquires if Shizuya is using an area invisible technique, which makes one's presence and scent undetectable essentially creating perfect camouflage. Iki confirms that this feature is part of Shizuya's weapon, giving him a tricky advantage. Stella expresses her dislike for Shizuya's fighting style, which involves attacking from a distance while using stealth camouflage. Iki agrees, noting that if Stella were to face Shizuya, he would likely retreat as her wide-range attacks would counter his stealth tactics effectively. Iki also reveals that Shizuya avoids opponents who utilize wide-range attacks like Stella's and has earned the nickname, the Hunter, for his sneaky tactics. She expresses concern for Iki's safety and asks if he will be okay facing Shizuya. Iki reassures her that he has a plan to defeat Shizuya and is confident in his victory. Later, while on a determined run, Iki encounters Nagi, who asks if there is any history of a grudge between him and Shizuya. Iki opens up to Nagi about his past, explaining that last year, his family, who had connections with the previous school director, tried to get him expelled. Shizuya saw this as an opportunity to target him and began bullying him. He challenged Iki to a duel to prove his worth, but Iki was not interested. Despite Iki's reluctance, Shizuya persistently pestered and attacked him, even when Iki was unarmed and unwilling to fight. As a result, Iki was neither punished nor expelled by the school director. Nagi expresses sympathy and wishes Iki good luck before leaving. As the battle approaches, Stella asks Iki if he wants to watch the ongoing matches, but he replies that he will be in the waiting area, focusing on his strategies. In the waiting area, the screen advises him to proceed only if he fully understands the risks and he confidently presses the button to approve his participation. Suddenly, a girl dressed in a red kimono approaches him and mocks Iki for being reckless. 
He responds confidently, saying he trusts in his own abilities and recognizes her as Sikio, a demon princess from the top league, and is thrilled that he knows about her. Sikio unexpectedly hugs him and offers special private lessons that night. What Kindo private lesson is she talking about? Their conversation is interrupted by the director, who questions Sikio about her misconduct with Iki and reminds her about the match she was supposed to supervise. Sikio, who is a new instructor, tries to hide behind Iki, but the director drags her away as the match begins. Iki reflects on his childhood and his first meeting with Stella. The announcer enthusiastically welcomes everyone to the match and to Sikio's annoyance. She is assigned as the commentator. Shizuya enters the arena confidently, receiving cheers from the crowd. He quickly steps into the arena and the battle begins. Shizuya uses his area invisible technique to attack Iki from various directions, taunting him throughout. Despite the challenge, Iki skillfully deflects most of Shizuya's laser attacks by tracing their origin to locate him. However, Shizuya suddenly disappears and announces that he will inform Iki about where he will strike before actually attacking. With this new strategy, Shizuya lands several blows on Iki, resulting in serious injuries from the unexpected assault. Shizuya explains that he can now use his invisibility on his laser attacks, making them harder for Iki to deflect. Seeing Iki in bad shape, Stella becomes angry and wonders why he didn't attack first. Nagi explains that Iki was likely nervous, making Stella realize the truth and feel guilty for not recognizing it earlier. Back in the arena, Shizuya continues his relentless attacks on Iki and reveals to everyone the condition he made with the new director for his graduation. Iki must win the Seven Star Festival battle, or he won't be allowed to graduate. The audience laughs, mocking Iki, as the Seven Star battle is notoriously tough to win. Shizuya delivers a fatal blow, and Iki collapses while Shizuya mockingly calls him trash. The crowd joins in, laughing and chanting how bad Iki is as well. In a fit of rage, Stella's fiery aura flares up, and she demands the crowd to stop mocking her favorite knight. She encourages Iki to keep fighting, and her words inspire him to rise again. He thanks her before preparing to counterattack Shizuya. Iki realizes he needs to rely on his perfect technique to counter Shizuya's attacks. Using his perfect vision, he sees through Shizuya's moves and ultimately defeats him, emerging victorious. However, the intense battle takes its toll, and Iki collapses. Sikio explains to everyone that Iki used his sword-stealing technique, which allows him to understand his opponent's logic and use it against them, similar to how he did with Stella during her mock battle. Later, in the hospital, Stella stays by Iki's side. Exhausted from the events, she eventually falls asleep next to him. Meanwhile, Nagi consoles Shizuku who is emotionally affected by the intense battle and its aftermath. When Stella wakes up, she scolds Iki for watching her sleep without waking her. Iki seizes the moment to confess his feelings, expressing how glad he is to have met her. Blushing, Stella reciprocates her feelings and kisses him on the cheek. They promise to stay together, strive for the highest knighthood, and look forward to facing each other in the final battle. It has been two weeks since Stella and Iki confessed their feelings for each other, but Iki hasn't taken any action, leaving Stella worried. She finds herself practicing with her sword, preparing for the upcoming battles but her concerns about their relationship continue to linger. Meanwhile, during the selection match, Iki performs exceptionally well winning five consecutive matches and re-establishing himself as a formidable opponent, shedding his previous reputation as the worst one. The audience praises him, referring to him as the uncrowned sword king. Later, after one of his matches, reporter Kagami and her friend approach Iki, expressing their desire to learn swordsmanship from him. Without hesitation, he agrees to teach them. This new development worries and makes Stella jealous, as she fears that more people seeking Iki's attention might create competition for his affection and potentially cause problems in their relationship. As Iki rises up every girl, the boys in his class also begin to envy him and decide to bully him. When class begins, instructor Yuri enters but before she can start teaching, she vomits red liquid, causing panic among the students and leading to the class being dismissed. Back in their room, Stella vents her frustration to Iki, saying that he is too generous and should prioritize spending more time with her instead of teaching others. However, Iki being somewhat oblivious to her true concerns, responds casually that he doesn't mind helping others. Just as Stella is about to express her desire for a more involved relationship, she notices that Iki has fallen asleep, which only fuels her anger and frustration further. The next day, Iki teaches the girls about balancing on one leg, a Chinese martial art technique to improve core strength. He explains that during a fight, more weight is put on one leg than both, 
making this technique essential. Kagami diligently takes notes, eager to write an article about it in the future. Seeing Ikki surrounded by girls, the boys in the class grow increasingly angry and confront him. They call him a failed senpai and summon their weapons to challenge him. To their surprise, Ikki easily handles them without using his spiritual sword, effortlessly deflecting their attacks with his bare hands. Realizing his strength, the boys accept their defeat, bow down to him, and express their envy and desire to be strong and popular like him. In a change of heart, they request Ikki to teach them as well, wanting to learn from him. He happily agrees to become their mentor, and they address him as their master. Meanwhile, Kagami continues taking notes, capturing every moment of this unexpected turn of events. Later, Shizuku approaches Ikki with drinks and asks him to teach her swordsmanship as well. He suggests she can learn from a family master instead. Shizuka then questions why Stella is holding two bottles of juice. Embarrassed, Stella explains that it's because she was too thirsty and proceeds to finish both bottles, surprising him. In reality, Stella wanted to be the one to provide him with refreshments, but Shizuka beat her to it, so she pretended the drinks were for herself to avoid appearing like a loser. After her drinking marathon, Stella insists she wants him to teach her as well. However, when she sees him hesitating, she withdraws the idea and runs away in annoyance. On her way, she encounters Nagi, who asks her about Shizuku's whereabouts. Stella tells him and notices a game in Nagi's hand. He explains that it's an autumn game called Private School Prince Academy and hands it over to her to play. Later, in her room, Stella plays the autumn game, imagining the characters as Icky and wishing he could be more affectionate like the characters in the game. Just then, Icky walks into the room and surprises her. He asks if she wants to join him and others where he will be giving swordsmanship lessons. Still upset with him from earlier, she questions why she should join him. In response, he tells her that she has already surpassed the levels he could teach, praising her swordplay techniques, which are entirely different from his own, and she agrees to join him at the pool to watch him train others. On their way back to their room on the bus, they hold each other's hands. However, their peaceful moment is interrupted when they both receive an email from the school simultaneously. The email informs them about their respective opponents in the upcoming matches. Ikki will face the general affairs manager of the student council, and Stella will face Ikazuchi, the secretary of the student council. The next day, Ikki faces off against Renren, Ren, who uses an attack called Runner's High, which allows her to run at an insane speed until she decides to stop. Ikki struggles to keep up with her, but manages to outmaneuver and capture her, securing his victory in the match. Meanwhile, Stella fights against Ikazuchi, who uses his ability called Accumulation of Slashing Weight to attack her. However, Stella manages to defeat him as well, securing her own victory. Later, Shizuka joins Iki to congratulate him on his win, offering to sleep next to him and nurse him back to health. Stella is disgusted by this and asks Iki to keep his distance from Shizuku. However, Shizuka turns on her charm and Iki, seemingly unaware of Shizuka's intentions, falls for it. Shizuku then turns to Stella, relishing in her victory and emphasizing the bond between siblings asking Stella not to come between them. Suddenly, Nagi reveals that they have been followed by someone for nearly a week. Ikki calls out the stalker to emerge from hiding, and a shy girl named Ais steps out from behind a tree, using branches as her cover. Stella recalls that Ais is the same girl she accidentally hit with a ball during pool training. The girl starts panicking and quickly leaves the scene, but in her haste, she accidentally falls into a nearby water body. They rescue her from the water and take her to the hospital. Ayase apologizes for her behavior and reveals that she is a third-year student. Iki recognizes her last name and asks if she is the daughter of Kaido Atsuji, a renowned swordmaster. Ayase confirms that she is indeed his daughter, which excites Iki. Shizuka tells Stella that Kaido is known as the last samurai, who earned victories in many prestigious battles despite not having any magical abilities like theirs. Iki shares his admiration for Kaido, saying he was his role model when he was a kid. Ayase then reveals that her father is no longer actively participating in matches due to an injury from his earlier battles that led him to be hospitalized. Shizuka then questions Ayase about why she was stalking them. Ayase confesses that she needs training and has been practicing alone for a long time. She wanted Iki's help with teaching her, but was too shy to ask him directly. Iki kindly offers to train her in swordplay, and she immediately agrees. Later, Iki and Ayase practice swordplay, and he observes that she has a good foundation likely due to her father. He stops their training and advises her that to improve, she should not simply imitate her father's moves exactly. Instead, he encourages her to find her own style and develop unique techniques. 
He then goes over to her to correct her posture, and she starts blushing while Stella and Shizuka watch, feeling jealous of their interaction. Ikki talks about how males and females have different anatomy, and how she can use it to her advantage rather than imitating her dad's technique. After this special instruction, Aie starts to make progress in her training and becomes impressed with Ikki's teaching. Later, she apologizes to him for being so hands-on during their training, and he reassures her it's not a big deal. Stella and Shizuku, who observe their bond, come to understand that Ikki was simply teaching swordplay, and their jealousy subsides. Ayase tells Ikki that she is now confident in improving her abilities and becomes determined to win the Seven Star Battle Festival. Later, in their room, Stella asks Ikki if he enjoys giving special instructions to Ayase and playfully requests the same treatment. Ikki tells her it's not like that and tells her not to stop with that insecure shit. The next day, Ayase and Stella train against each other, with Ikki happily watching them. After the training session, Ayase treats them to dinner as a gesture of gratitude. At the restaurant, Stella eats heartily since she doesn't have to pay the bill. Ayase asks her how she maintains her figure despite eating so much, causing Ikki to laugh awkwardly and change the topic. Ayase then expresses her gratitude to Ikki for teaching her, and he modestly says it's not a big deal. The rest of the dinner would have proceeded without incident. But trouble arises when a gang of men led by a big guy called Corrado approaches their table and harasses Ayase. Ikki intervenes and tells them to back the fuck off. They try to provoke him into a fight and Corrado smashes a bottle on Ikki's head, challenging him. As the situation escalates, other customers fear for their safety and flee the scene. A waiter attempts to call the police but is halted by a mysterious girl dressed in all white, carrying a matching umbrella. Witnessing Ikki getting beaten up, Stella is ready to step in and defend him, but he stops her. They continue to provoke him, but he smiles calmly and takes their attacks without reacting. Eventually, the gangster is tired of not getting any reaction out of him, give up and leave. After they leave, Stella scolds Ikki for letting them get away and for stopping her from intervening. He explains calmly that he refrained from retaliating to avoid getting expelled from the academy. Stella argues that he didn't have to use his sword, so he wouldn't have been expelled, but he explains that he couldn't have taken on the gangsters barehanded as they appeared quite strong. Suddenly, a small boy appears out of nowhere and informs them that Corrado is known as the Sword Eater and is the ace of Donru Academy. The boy applauds Ikki's judgment and reveals that Corrado was in the top eight of the previous year's Seven Star Battle Festival, shocking everyone. The mysterious Umbrella Girl also appears and agrees with the boy's statement. Stella questions Ikki if he knows any of them, and he tells her that the little boy is called Yudakata, who is the vice president of the student council of another academy, and that the mysterious lady is Kanata, who is in charge of a county in the same school. Stella becomes suspicious when Yudakata offers to heal Ikki's wounds, which he accepts. Later, on their way from the restaurant, Ayase asks Ikki if he's alright, and he tells her he's perfectly fine, thanks to Yudakata's treatment. Suddenly, Ikki receives an email from the school informing him that his upcoming selection battle is against Ayase. This creates awkward tension between them, and she runs away embarrassed. During her training, Ayase becomes distant and stops attending their sessions altogether. Ikki discusses the matter with Nagi, who advises him to stay calm, saying that Ayase will make a move before their battle. The next day, as predicted, Ikki receives a message from Ayase asking him to meet her alone at the rooftop building at 3 a.m. Has she not seen the 3 a.m. ghost videos on YouTube? Nagi warns him that it might be a trap, but Ikki decides to go, stating that he can't refuse a request from his friend. Nagi warns him again that he should be prepared to end his friendship with her if anything goes wrong. Despite Nagi's concerns, Ikki sticks to his decision, determined not to let anything break their friendship. He meets her on the rooftop as she requested, and she asks about the promise he made with Stella to win the tournament. Ikki reassures her that they'll give it their all. She presses him further, questioning what he would do if he faced an unbeatable opponent. Ikki firmly insists he would fight fairly, even if he didn't win. She disagrees, saying that justice without results is meaningless. Summoning her sword, she leans back over the edge of the roof forcing Ikki to use his ultimate Itashura technique to save her. Afterward, she admits she tricked him into using the technique, which can only be used once a day. With their selection match in just 10 hours, Ikki won't have time to recover and use the attack again. She explains that this gives her a chance to win. Feeling betrayed, Ikki questions why she would go to such extremes. She responds that winning is all that matters, even if it brings disgrace to her family. Ikki warns her, but she remains determined. Ikki returns to his room and collapses, waking a worried Stella. She rushes him to the hospital. At the hospital, he's greeted by Shizuku, 
Nagi and Stella who are all concerned for him. Icky worries that he's missed the MATC, but Stella assures him there's still time. Then, the director arrives, taking Icky aside for questioning. Icky refuses to talk about the incident, willing to take responsibility for any damages. The director reveals that her father was left unable to wield a sword after a battle with Corrado, who seized their land. She is fighting to restore her family's honor at the battle festival. Reflecting on her determination, Icky, along with Nagi and Stella, tries to find a way to defeat her. When the battle begins, Icky quickly goes on the offensive, but she uses a mysterious ability that confuses the audience, even Stella. No one knew about her powers because she hadn't fought in any official battles until now, and her victories had all been due to her swordsmanship alone, without the use of magic. Icky finds himself in a tough spot, but he doesn't back down. She uses her taste of wind attack, creating invisible whirlwinds and traps. Her device's special ability conceals invisible sword cuts, which should technically be against the rules, but no one notices. Icky manages to dodge her attacks, surprising her as she wonders if he's figured out her strategy. She attacks more intensely and Icky, already wounded, realizes that one more hit could be dangerous. To counter, Icky uses an irregular guarding stance and remembers requesting Yuri as a supervisor in case any rules were broken. She continues her relentless assault, but Icky tells her that she's losing herself, ignoring her true abilities in an effort to be someone she's not. He urges her to fight with pride, shouting about her father's fate. She attacks again determined to restore her family's honor. Icky meets her head on, countering her attacks with precision. She realizes she needs to be faster than his perception, but her thoughts drift back to her family's downfall. She attacks with renewed determination, but Icky strikes back with his fourth secret sword technique, defeating her. After the battle, Icky commends her for not giving up on her father's legacy and offers to help her regain what she has lost. He reminds her that true pride in their swordsmanship is what matters, especially when they are pushed to their limits. Touched by his words, she admits she had been deceiving herself and feels ashamed. Icky reassures her that her heart is strong because she never gave up on her father's memory. Grateful for his kindness, she asks for his help and Icky, without hesitation agrees as a friend. She finally sees Icky as a true and honorable swordsman, much like her father. Ayase reflects on the time spent with her father, recalling his unwavering support despite his heart condition, which forced him to retire while she was still in junior school. Even though he stepped down, he never stopped guiding her and his other students with dignity. He taught her essential techniques such as relaxing her shoulders while keeping her arms strong, tightening her wrists without straining, and mastering her father Kaido's secret move, Tenai Muho. Although Ia struggled with these lessons, her father always praised her for faithfully following his teachings. He often reminded her to take pride in her skills, to always be polite, to help those in need, and to stand against injustice. These lessons left a deep mark on Ia's, and she carried them with her even after her father's illness worsened. Later, Stella reads on her phone about Corrado, known as the Sword Eater, who three years ago unofficially entered other schools and destroyed martial arts academies in town. Ia shares with Stella and Icky the story of the day Corrado fought her father. Her father apologized for not being there when Corrado had previously hurt Ia's, and then, filled with determination, he confronted Corrado. Despite his efforts, her father was defeated and Ia's overwhelmed with regret, expresses how she blames herself for not standing up to Corrado that day. She regrets not being able to help her father when he needed her most, and despises Corrado's swordsmanship, which she sees as nothing but senseless violence. Icky then takes Ayase and Stella to what was once her father's dojo, now occupied by Corrado. As they enter, they find Corrado's gang laughing. Icky steps forward and asks about Corrado's whereabouts, and after learning his location, they confront him. Corrado mocks them, but Icky challenges him to a duel on Ayase's behalf, vowing to win back her family's home and dojo. Corrado taunts Icky, recalling how Icky had shown no courage at the restaurant, but Icky confidently asserts that this time will be different. He points out that, while using devices outside of school is prohibited, the dojo is technically still a martial arts school, and if Corrado gives permission, they can duel. Laughing, Corrado agrees. Corrado then summons his sword, Orochimaru, which can change shapes. As the battle begins, Corrado charges forward, but Icky manages to defend himself. Corrado attacks relentlessly, and though Icky dodges his strikes, his counters seem to have little effect. Confused by Corrado's ability, Icky tries to make sense of his tactics. Then, Corrado's sword transforms into a long snake-like bone creature, striking at Icky with incredible speed. Despite Icky's best efforts, 
Corrado's reflexes make him seem unbeatable. As the fight continues, Corrado's marginal counter ability is revealed, allowing him to respond instantly to any attack. Icky starts to struggle, barely managing to fend off Corrado's relentless onslaught. Observing the battle, Ayes realizes that this fight mirrors her father's duel with Corrado. She tries to intervene but Stella stops her, explaining that interrupting would mean they would lose any chance of reclaiming her family's property. Stella also points out that Icky seems to be enjoying the challenge, trying to figure out how to beat Corrado. Seeing Icky's determination, Ayes comes to understand that her father's defeat wasn't due to weakness, but because Corrado was a powerful opponent. Watching Icky enjoy the battle, she realizes that her father likely felt the same during his last fight and remembers how he had apologized for it despite his enjoyment. Tears fill Ayes' eyes as she finally understands her father's mindset. She regrets not being able to fully grasp the spirit of a true swordsman. Meanwhile, Stella notices Corrado's constant attacks are wearing him down, as his marginal counter technique is rapidly draining his stamina. Corrado, impressed by Icky's resilience, praises him. Icky responds that he hates losing and is having too much fun to end the fight. Vowing to avenge Ia's father, Icky surprises Corrado by using Kaido's secret technique, Tenai Muho, which Ia's father had attempted to use but failed. Ia's is amazed that Icky knows this technique, and Stella reveals that she too had experienced it during their mock battle. Impressed by Icky's skill, Corrado asks for his name and tells him they will continue their fight at the Seven Star Battle Festival. Before leaving, Corrado allows them to do whatever they wish with the dojo. After the battle, Ayes apologizes for not understanding the true meaning of swordsmanship, but Icky reassures her that it wasn't her fault. He explains that the only reason he was able to win was because he learned her father's technique by observing her. He believes she is the true successor to her father's legacy. Grateful for his words, Ayes thanks Icky and resolves to grow stronger so she can carry on her father's legacy with confidence. Together, they decide to rebuild the martial arts school. Later, Stella informs Icky that Ayes has confessed to the selection match committee about her foul play during their fight, leading to her removal from the tournament and a 10-day suspension. Both Stella and Icky respect Ayes for taking responsibility. Just then, Stella receives a message revealing that Kaido has regained consciousness. Overjoyed by the news, they celebrate together, but their moment is interrupted by Shizuku and Nagi, who had been eavesdropping from behind a bench. Stella quickly covers up by pretending they were thumb wrestling leading to another exchange of insults between Stella and Shizuku, while Iki and Nagi awkwardly stand by. In the upcoming battles, Iki continues to dominate securing victory in 12 consecutive matches without a single loss. His remarkable performance earns him widespread admiration, and the crowd begins to refer to him as a master. Impressed by his exceptional skills in the selection matches, the director acknowledges both Iki and Stella as star students with great potential. As a result, the director assigns them to attend the school's training camp at Okotama, where they will receive proper training. Excited about the trip, Stella comments on the fresh air and thanks the director for organizing the camp. Icky agrees that it's nice to take a week off from school as they travel through beautiful landscapes. Meanwhile, at the metro station, Shizuku expresses her disappointment at not being able to stop her brother Icky and Stella from going on the trip. She asks Nagi to accompany her, but he regretfully tells her he already has plans for the day encouraging her to be strong before sending her off on a train. At the camp, Stella enjoys spending time with Icky, even suggesting they take their relationship further and proceeding to kiss him. However, Icky quickly stops her pointing to a group of people watching them, who turn out to be the student council members. Upon arriving at their lodging, Stella engages in a fierce magical badminton match with Renren. Ren. Both of them use their magical powers, making the game appear ridiculous to the onlookers as it's far from a typical badminton match. Icky approaches Kanata, a student council member, and asks why they are there. She explains that they are working for the student council and asks if Icky is there for the same reason. Shocked, he realizes that both he and Stella have been tricked by the director. Stella later finds herself cleaning the floor of the camp, and the council's umbrella lady informs her that the real training camp will start in a month, but until then, they must clean the entire camp in preparation. Stella regrets coming, realizing that the student council's work is more boring than expected. However, as she observes the student council members cleaning with enthusiasm, she starts to appreciate the responsibilities they carry. A young boy in the council reveals that they only requested extra help from the director, who sent Icky and Stella. He also mentions that their student council president, Tuka, has been eager to meet Icky. Another member explains that Tuka has been delayed due to some errands, but will join them soon. After completing their cleaning duties, Icky and Stella decide to explore the area 
and visit a nearby waterfall. Rin Rin teases Icky, implying that he just wants some alone time with Stella, but the student council members encourage them to have fun. As they hike up the steep mountain, Stella starts to tire out. Icky checks in on her, commenting that earlier in the day, her fat ass only ate two bowls of ramen like a normal person instead of her usual seven. Stella insists she's fine, and they continue the climb. Meanwhile, Shizuku returns home, where her cat greets her warmly. She finds childhood photos of Ikki in her room, which fill her with joy. However, when she goes to the living room, her father wants to talk. The conversation becomes tense as Shizuku expresses her frustration with how her father treats Ikki. Back at the camp, Stella's condition worsens. She feels dizzy and nauseous, even jokingly asking if their previous kiss could have made her pregnant. Ikki reassures her that's impossible and suggests she may have caught a cold. Stella confused, admits she has never had a cold before. Concerned, Ikki takes her to a nearby mountain lodge instead of returning to camp. As Ikki cares for Stella, checking her for a fever, he realizes she's burning up, comforting her. They discuss their relationship, with Ikki expressing his desire to openly talk about it with both their families. However, unbeknownst to them, a stalker is watching and reporting their location to someone. At Shizuku's home, her argument with her father intensifies. Shizuku reveals that she only came home because of messages from her mother, but her father admits that he sent those messages, pretending to be her mother. Back at the mountain lodge, Ikki hears a strange noise and steps outside to find a giant rock monster attacking. He quickly rushes back to protect Stella, carrying her to safety under a tree. Summoning his sword, Ikki fights the rock monster, but it splits into smaller creatures, complicating the battle. The monsters attack Ikki and move towards Stella. Just then, Renrin arrives and rescues Stella, handing her to Ikki. The rest of the student council soon arrives and joins the battle. Yudakata explains to Ikki that these rock monsters are likely being controlled by someone using the steel wire ability, which allows them to remotely control inorganic materials. Moments later, Tuka the council president arrives. She explains that even though the steel wires control the monsters, they are all connected by a common power source, making them traceable. Tuka uses her thunder slash technique, effortlessly defeating the rock monsters. Ikki is amazed by her strength and realizes why she was one of the top four finalists from the previous year's battles and is known as the strongest knight in the academy. Meanwhile, Shizuku receives a message revealing that her next opponent in the seven-star battle will be Tuka, which excites her.